Welcome to Search Talk Live with search engine optimization and marketing experts Robert O'Haver and Michelle Stinson Ross. Powered by the Robert Palmer family of companies. All right, welcome back to another episode of Search Talk Live. I'm your host, Robert O'Haver, along with Michelle Stenson Ross. Michelle, how's it going? It's going all right. Good. I hope that you're doing well today. I'm uh, battling a sore throat, but I'm getting through it. You can't really tell on, my, on, on the air, so it's nice. <laughs> no, we wouldn't know at all if you hadn't said anything. Yeah. Um, so, to those of you tuning in for the first time, Search Talk Live is a digital marketing podcast. And we really, we do cover everything to do with digital. Um, it could be content marketing, SEO. We do a lot of SEO stuff. We do a lot of, um, I mean, we just cover it all. Social media, you name it. But uh, so, Michelle, uh, the people that don't know about you, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I am the VP of Marketing and Sales at the Gruen Agency. Uh, we're a we are a full stack marketing agency specializing in consumer product and e-commerce marketing, as well as service industry lead gen. We've been around for over 20 years and accepting new business if you guys want to get in touch with us. <laughs> there you go. All right. So now one thing I want to get on, it's been on my chest here for the rest, you know, part of the week. Um, as you know, uh, Barry Schwartz kind of announced uh, well, among other channels, but Barry Schwartz is pretty predominant as far as telling everybody about the industry. So I want to give him credit on that. But, um, you know, you've heard the story that Danny Sullivan's retiring, Rand Fishkin's leaving Moz. Um, you got Matt McGee last year left, or he's leaving search engine land, right? Um, uh, Miley Oli. Yeah, he's, he's definitely stepping down from some of his roles with third door. Yeah. And Miley Oli left Google. Um, Matt Cutts leaving Google. Um, and there seems to be like this rumor going around. And I wanted to clarify that it is not anything to do with it. Um, I know I know all these guys and Michelle, you do, too. Um, mm -hmm. There's SEO is not going anywhere. It's going to get harder. Yep. <laughs> it is harder. But yeah. uh, it that sometimes is a good thing. But if you concentrate on the quality of your site, doing best practices. That's what SEO is all about. Bringing clients in and getting them to convert or do an action on your site. Um, if you follow all those guidelines and make your, your site awesome, then Google's going to rank it. I mean, there's a lot more to it. <laughs> but, <laughs> right, right, right. It, you get my gist. So there's, it's, it's never going to die. It's as long as there's a website that needs to be optimized and cleaned up and you know, conversion optimization, all that stuff. That's, that's all part of SEO. So that's not going to go away. Would you like to add to that? Um, I think it's a great segue into our topic today because as much as SEO has become much more complicated, in some ways kind of convoluted, certainly Google's not going away anytime soon. So we have to get smarter better, faster, more efficient, and frankly, more human savvy when it comes to search engine optimization. And certainly the topic that we're going to be discussing kind of digs into that today. So I'm yeah, excited yeah. to get into it. Yeah, absolutely. So our guest today, all the way from Mexico, <laughs> uh, Paul <laughs> Cortman. Paul, how's it going? It's going great. Glad to be here. Yeah, man. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, first of all, I'm here to announce that SEO is dead, that I've decided to retire as well. I'm sorry. And, um, you know, it's just I'm a, I'm a trend, you know, I'm not a trendsetter, but I'm definitely a trend follower. And you all should drink the Kool-Aid and retire now. Uh, no. Um, Did we lose I've connection? Running... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> ah, oh, you had me. <laughs> that was good. Um I've been running in digital marketing sphere for, I don't know, maybe 12, 13 years now. Uh, and uh, seven of those years, I've been running my own uh, digital marketing agency. Um, 
Oh, in short, uh, I am a family guy. I've got a wife and four kids and uh, originally from the great state of the the great high five state of Michigan. Uh, now we're chilling in Mexico uh, because it's just I don't know. It's a better quality of life uh, for our kids and for all of us, despite what you read in the news media. It's actually better here. So nice. that's that um, we've lately really drill down into a productized service and that's what we're here to talk about today all right gotcha awesome yeah so it had nothing to do with uh trump being elected no. <laughs> Just people ask that all the time and you know in hindsight yeah it probably did but we left <laughs> before he was in so gotcha all right <laughs> no politics on the show sorry guys I had to throw that in there though. yeah so what we're going to talk about today is how uh Brian Dean came up with this thing he calls the skyscraper strategy. And uh, you're going to tell us about that, correct? Yeah, I'm not going to tell you how he came up with it because I can't read his mind. But True. I would, you know, like the skyscraper tech or methodology, if you haven't read about it, if you haven't heard about it, uh, then you haven't read much about SEO and backlink building in the last three years. Um Brian Dean was the first to coin the term and he released his findings, essentially a case study on doing this on his own site. And um, it it worked fantastically for him. There's been a lot of controversy uh, since that, not in not like true controversy, like, oh, he's cheating or anything like that. But other people have tried this methodology and completely failed. And so either they're not believing that the methodology works or, you know, I don't think anybody's gone so far as to say Brian was, you know, fibbing his numbers or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, there's just, you know, it doesn't work for everyone. And Brian is a really incredible um, writer and explainer and teacher. And so he makes it sound super simple and like this works every time. It's a fail proof method. And that's not always true. So, Mm -hmm. you know, take some reality with there and realize that you're dealing with real humans and they don't always behave the way they should or the way you want them to. Yeah. I mean, there's also variables you can't count account for too, you know? Exactly. But, you know, I've tried to have Brian on, so I guess, you know. <laughs> Shall we throw him under the bus so he has to come and defend himself? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of doing that because I know he's probably listening because I did tweet that you're talking about it, so. <laughs> Well, hi, Brian. Thanks for releasing your findings to the public. Uh, I really respect you. Um, But what we've done is we've taken this methodology and said, can we do it at scale? Because we tried it a couple of times for a couple of our clients and it was working really fantastic. Mm -hmm. But it just takes so much time and so much effort. And it's a pain. I mean, really, like, my staff was saying, Paul, I have no desire to do this again. And I'm like, but it works. (laughs) So (laughs) we were at a bit of a impasse there until we could find a way to scale it. So we run, for those of you who are purists in the skyscraper methodology, we actually run a a slight variant to say um, it's really trajectory in building backlinks and referring domains that matters to Google. We've watched it a couple of times where some clients have purchased a skyscraper and then, you know, six months later, the, you know, three months later, they've received the benefit, they're ranking well, uh, things moved up. And then three months after that, they lose all their rankings again. And they're like, what's going on? You know, and it's a slow incline and a slow decline, but you know, they're just like, what happened? I thought this was golden and supposed to work. And it's what we've come to discover over the last two years that we've been doing this is you need that trajectory that Google needs to see. And, you know, by Google, I say Google and Bing. Mm -hmm. Uh, They need to see that you're actually moving in a positive direction as far as acquiring links. They don't want to see like suddenly 200 referring domains show up Uh, I've seen that happen, you know, where 200 referring domains show up within the span of seven days and Mm -hmm. suddenly, you know, I don't know if you get de-indexed or there's a manual, you know, caution or whatever, but you're not going to be found for a while and then eventually you get let back in. Mm -hmm. But 
my theory is they're you know the spam team is checking for malware or spam or you know whatever because you tripped a flag because it was very yeah. unnatural yeah. whereas what we're finding is if you can build it naturally slowly over time and just keep up with that trajectory uh yeah google really rewards that quite well so consistency well, yeah definitely consistency Sorry, Michelle. If I may interject, it's it's okay. Um, one of the things I notice is that a lot of this has to do with the content that you're promoting and you're trying to get links back to. And although that piece of content may be just absolutely brilliant and completely comprehensive, if it's niche and it's really focused, which it should be, there's likely a very limited and somewhat smaller pool of people that should, because of relevance, link back to that content anyway. You can't, it's not reasonable to expect that people are just going to link like mad and continue to link like mad off into infinity. It's not how it works. At, at some point, you get through your pool of relevant quality sites that should be linking back to this piece of content and you should expect at some point once you've gotten through all of that that it should drop back off right and to a certain degree i mean like target audience really matters we've been working with uh get this uh, a business to business copper cold forging uh industry and it's like who still forges metals but yeah they they need to in order for us to you know fly spacex we need forged metals and a solid round rings and all this and it's just this crazy stuff but who in their right mind is blogging about this who in their right mind is linking to this and so you know we definitely have to um encourage that client to to go with shoulder content as best as we can but then also the other thing is this whole methodology of reaching out to people and saying hey i believe this content provides a lot of value to your audience you've already linked to a similar piece of content either replace that or write a new post about this but i believe that this has a ton of value to your clients in order for you to say that with a straight face even though you're putting it in a template and you're sending it over email you really need to have content that actually improves someone's life or improves the you know the the reader's perspective and so we've done a whole lot of work at actually making that happen instead of just okay you know we've got the ultimate guide because you had 16 now we have 21 softwares that we're reviewing or whatever um, we actually try to tweak it and adjust it so it's actually something that when you read it you're like wow i'm really engaged with this i really like it it's the whole basic concept behind quality content and it's amazing to find that nine times out of ten people that we reach out to who actually read the article they're just like wow that was a really great article and that's when you know that you're not going to be penalized for this you're not going to be you know doing ill according to google because you're actually providing what google wants is high value for their end users mm -hmm. and so the more you can provide that the better off you are which is why i fell in love with the skyscraper methodology because it ties that all in instead of just you know guest posting or uh broken link you know back link building and it's like uh, yeah that doesn't really like impact people's lives and make for a better internet whereas if we can take crusty content that you know isn't really engaging and isn't really great and then actually take best practices as far as content goes make it readable make it thorough make it well sourced have good images and videos to break it up and engage learners of all kinds as well as talk about topics that really matter to people um yeah it's a slam dunk very good if you're just tuning in we're listening you're listening with uh we're talking about <laughs> i can't talk today <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> so we're talking with paul Cortman Cortman uh about the sky straight skyscraper methodology i'm telling you i'm doing great today uh if you have questions you can go to twitter type in hashtag search talk live and we will answer your questions live on the air all right we're so. definitely watching the hashtag um 
So if I might interject here, especially since Robert seems to be getting all tongue-tied at the moment, <laughs> um, <laughs> would you mind just kind of briefly outlining what exactly the skyscraper technique is and it's just so that everybody's kind of on the same page with this and understanding what it is we're talking about? Yeah, well, the, the goal of the skyscraper methodology or technique is to acquire backlinks. And if you, you know, I'm hoping that the, for those of you who are listening, don't need to be explained as to why you need backlinks. Most of my clients, I need to explain that. But why? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, you got me again. <laughs> ah. um, so what we do is we say, well, let's find a piece of content that's out there written, whether it's a page or a post or a PDF or whatever it might be. Let's find a piece of content that has something to do, is valuable for our target audience, but and it has already shown success. It has a decent number of referring domains pointing to it. So it's proven that this is a topic that people want to link to, that they care about, that it matters to your target audience. But then we further filter that and say, okay, of all these pieces of content that are famous, you know, or that have gotten a lot of uh, traction and backlinks, um, which of these are just not perfect like they're just they just need more it's not like they're just off center but like where they're old or just it's a really awful experience or you don't even want to read it it is the only resource out there but you don't want to read it and how can we make it better how can we improve upon that and make it better and then you find that little golden nugget you you use that as your target article you make it significantly better and publish it on your site and then you go out and reach out to all the people who linked to the previous article we also found a little trick here is to find people who link to similar articles because there's always this ring of articles around a specific topic mm -hmm. and um, so it's not just the hundred domains that link to that first article but you can find very similar articles about the same topic and uh, and find you know, sites that have linked to all of these, reach out to every single one of those, tell them about your cool new guide, uh, listicle or article or whatever it might be, and, you know, offer them some sort of value in exchange for them to create a link or to replace the link to your guide. And um, yeah, that's, we give three different options, but that's kind of the gist of it is you're you're doing the majority of it is the the Pareto principle. You're doing 80 percent of the work is the outreach, whereas 20 percent was creating the content, researching and developing really great content. So, you know, if you look at that correctly uh, for easy numbers, we'll say say it, you spent 10 hours doing all the research, finding the right content, uh, you know, filtering it down. Re researching good sources and writing a full-fledged article you spent 10 hours on that well that's 20 percent so you now need to spend 80 percent of your time on you know outreach which uh is 40 hours if i'm doing my math on the air correct but you you know how many of us are regularly spending 40 man hours uh, marketing or outreaching about a specific piece of content and it's very rare but that is where the skyscraper method uh, is it, you know it, it just works so well because by getting that out there you're going to get traffic you're going to get referring backlinks you're going to get people talking about you your brand and your content so if you do that on a repeatable process it just uh, you know I don't want to say it's magical it just makes everything better but you start seeing droves of traffic come in and we have multiple case studies of where you know we've increased traffic you know doubled tripled traffic but what's even more important is because this is targeted traffic you see their sales or their leads dramatically go through the roof mm -hmm. because you're not just doubling traffic but you're doubling traffic to a you know, a niche, a, a target audience. And so they don't just see a double, but usually with a double of traffic, we see a triple or a quadruple of leads or sales. So it's really, it's really fun to come back after six months and say, look, did you see all this that we're doing? And they're like, yeah, we need to hire a new salesman because of all the leads. Nice. So that's a lot of fun. Nice. But what people need to understand 
is that all this is based on if it's good quality content. You're not churning, it's burning content. Huge. Yeah. And, you know, Brian Dean actually says it himself, and I don't know if you've picked it up or read between the lines here, but he doesn't post every week. He, You know, he's been writing more lately than we've seen him write in the past, you know, two years. But his site ranks so well because he produces one pillar piece of content mm-hmm. that's really great that suddenly the entire web is talking about skyscraper is such a a known commodity now that like we just did a research on upwork for fun and there are people posting jobs on upwork you have to know the skyscraper methodology etc blah 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 and they don't go into and explain it it's just there's a need and they want somebody to do the skyscraper method for them and it's like well wait a minute that comes from one post from what two or three years ago Mm -hmm. that Brian Dean wrote, no one else had labeled this as skyscraper before him. He wrote that one post and it, you know, went gangbusters through the SEO industry. And part of that is because we are the SEO industry and this is what we do. And we link to things and talk about things ad nauseum, but it also works. And so what he's doing is he's not writing about all the failures. He's not writing about every test that he performs. He's writing about the things that really work. And so instead of writing a blog post every week, he's writing one every couple of months that are really pillar content. So, yeah, when Skyscraper itself, ironic that the father of the Skyscraper technique does this naturally, really focuses on really high quality content that's going to provide a ton of value. Um, And if you don't do that, you're going to fail miserably at the Skyscraper technique. Um, Here's a going back to to what was said previously um we had a person come to us and say they tried the skyscraper technique but they couldn't get a single referring domain and they were like what did we do wrong and what they had done is taken the ultimate guide to seo and then they applied that to general contractors because that was their target audience was general contractors and so seo for general contractors and it was just way too niche Nobody had any interest in it. It was okay content, but like, seriously, uh, how boring is that? Because general contractors aren't focused on their websites. And so they're not super excited about that. They may have gotten a better result if they went with dentists or, you know, somebody where it's something that people are doing a local search and that's a very, you know, competitive market space. Not saying general contractors aren't competitive. It's just not, they haven't taken to the web yet. Uh, like we've seen other industries. And so they just by changing their focus and niching that article down one step, it suddenly make it impractical for anybody to link to it. Um, so it's really, it really is 100% on that content, the quality and the target that you select. Yeah, that, that article has over a thousand, almost a thousand shares on Twitter and over a thousand, thousand sixty three on Facebook. And it's got over a, half a million backlinks to the page. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good well, luck beating that Well, what's funny is we, we laugh so much about SEO is dead, you know, long yeah. live SEO. We're, we're nothing but zombies at this point. But funny enough, this technique should provide a resurrection of sorts for old school PR, because that's exactly what this technique is. It's yeah. taking a piece of content, it's taking a piece of news, whatever, and shopping it out to other content writers, journalists, bloggers, vloggers who do video content, all of the other people that would find that pillar piece of content as a really great resource to write about and refer back to. That's old school PR from way back before digital days. And it still works because it's a human process. Michelle, that, exactly. was, that was pretty awesome. You, uh, your bandwidth dropped really quick and you're, you started sounding like you were drunk. <laughs> I don't know if you heard it. Did you hear it, Paul? I didn't hear that. Oh, no. okay. it was, it, I guess maybe Glorious. it was Glorious. Just <laughs> it's wonderful. Like, I... <laughs> it was funny. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I'm laughing because I was focused on the content. You and your, <laughs> your sick voice. I don't know. You're just <laughs> laughing at that. But 
she's exactly right. Like yeah. the PR angle of this, we actually use PR tools for it um, because it is about trying to pitch to someone. How can I provide value to you? So you talk about this article and, uh, and it's, it's fun. I mean, it's, you could say it's old school salesmanship of, you know, I need to provide value to you to convince you to do the technique, the thing I want you to do. It's fun. I've used to be involved in conversion rate optimization and on page conversion optimization. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because now when we're doing our outreach method, that's all we're doing is split testing where, you know, it's over email and through templates, but it's still the same basic thing of how can I convince you to take the next step in the funnel uh, to provide value, you know, to provide sure. essentially value to me, the backlink. Yeah, one thing I want to add to that too. I mean, I don't know what your practices is as far as content goes, but I've seen the longer tail stuff. I mean, the longer form stuff um, really make a huge difference in as far as getting links and, and attracting Google. Well, uh, correlation does not equal causation. Like we just have to put that out here. I can write a 7,000 word article and ain't nobody going to link to it because it's, you know, just ad nauseum about me and my day. Mm. It's pointless, right? Um, however, there's, there's the combination of uh, more is better, but also being succinct. So sure. we find the sweet spot is somewhere between 1,000 to 3,000 words. Mm -hmm. And that really depends on the audience and the topic. Um, you know, if you just can't get more than 1,500 words, either you're a bad copywriter or this topic just isn't going to work. So, you know, like there's, there's kind of an ebb and flow there. We go back and forth. But definitely we do produce, you know, normally it would be rare for us to do less than 2,000 words for an article um, just because we find that to be the ultimate guide, to be something that is improving upon something else, we need to pull in a lot of other content, a lot of resources, a lot of proof that this is worth it or this is the right way to go. So it's not just taking a listicle and making it a longer listicle. It's more along the lines of how can we research this, have well-sourced uh people that are saying this is the right way to do it or this is a better tool or whatever it is the article is about. I'd have to agree with you. Michelle? Um, I, I'm reading you loud and clear and I, I like what you're having to say. I, one of the things I'd like to say about topic is that if you've got the right topic and you've already seen a demonstration across the web or possibly on your own website that this is something that people want, getting that word count should not be difficult to do. I mean, we're, we're talking about doing some pillar content internally for Gruen. And we're kind of going through the same things. Like how long should this be? Is this too long? Is this not long enough? I said, so long as we thoroughly cover what needs to be covered, we should be fine. And I'm finding already that the topics that we're working on are so in depth and so in demand that getting the link there is not the problem mm -hmm. at all. No, no, if you do it right, it's totally, and if you're passionate about it, you know, like if you're actually going to go into depth and make a really great article, um, it, d it doesn't take long to get there. Yeah. Well, guys, we got to take a break. We'll be right back. Search Talk Live is sponsored by the Robert Palmer family of companies. Check out robertpalmercompanies.com for more information. Find the true value of your home when you log on. Homevalue.com. Get your questions in on Twitter. Type hashtag search talk live and your question. Now back to the show. All right. If you're just tuning in, we're talking with Paul Cortman. Um, what's the name of your company, Cortman? Uh, Paul? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You, you struggle with my last name, so you have to say it multiple times. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's the medication I'm taking for my sore throat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Blame it on the drugs. <laughs> you must be in Colorado. Yeah. Um, the connects digital marketing so it's c-o-n-n-e-x digital marketing yeah all right and then if your website the website and dot com connects digital marketing dot com, <laughs> dot com. Yeah. Right. exactly oh <laughs> that yahoo ad from days gone by all right. those were the days 
All right. Um, all right. So where are we at? I have a question, if you don't mind. All right. Um, so we've been talking about outreach and obviously the email list and cultivating an email email list based on um, people who have or publications who have already linked to similar or maybe related content. But Frank, to really succeed at this, it, it's just like any other type of content distribution in that once you get it written, yes, you need to email it out to people. You need to be promoting it on social media, all that kind of stuff. One of the interesting things that I've been dealing with with clients fairly often is getting them to understand that this – niche audience, shall we say, of potential backlinks or potential influencers. There are several names for this audience. Uh, you know, for for the old school PR folks, it's just straight up journalists. But you have to remember that this type of content, like we said before, is not only for the end user that we wrote it for, but it also should be a resource for people that want to link to it, refer to it, write about it. And that segment of audience works and can be um, paid promotion fodder for that article just as much as it is email. And frankly, especially for an email list that maybe I've never touched before, I might actually want to promote it on Facebook to that exact same list so they kind of see it just in their world lurking around, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, so that by the time I do email them, they kind of already know what's up. They're like, well, yeah, that sounds familiar. I think I'll actually open that and pay attention to it. <laughs> uh, giving away all the secret tips of the trade, are you? <laughs> um, <laughs> it is amazing, thanks to Facebook, what you can do with email addresses now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like I use, you know, we have another side of our company that's focused on on PPC, on online ads. And you know, we use lookalike audiences all the time, but you're exactly right that if you have people's email addresses and there's ways to defeat the system and drill it down to specific people, which I don't really want to talk about live or at least on <laughs> in public, I should say. Um, we won't you, tell all the secrets. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. We won't tell anybody. You can. <laughs> right. <laughs> You can drill down to a specific person and you can get an ad in front of that person. And so, um, you know, if you really want Brian Dean on here, I can talk to you off air about how to do this and we can just plaster. <laughs> just retarget ads. his ass. No, every kidding. time, every time he's on Facebook, all he's going to see is search talk live needs Brian Dean. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll have some fun with that. But, you know, those sorts of techniques of, being everywhere, of getting in front of these people, of, you know, getting them to a specific page. If mm -hmm. they click a link in your email and then you retarget them specifically. Yep. Um, I've seen some pass through pages, uh, seen some or used some uh, where essentially they're thinking they're clicking on the link to go to the article. And we don't want to retarget everybody that hits that article. We're just retargeting, you know, as you said, the journalists who we're reaching out to. So we send them to a pass through page that they land sets a cookie and then forwards them onto the article. Um, and now boom, we've got them and we can retarget them anywhere. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of little different things that you can do. However, a lot of these techniques are more time consuming. And, you know, I was talking in the beginning about the dirty work, like it's just a ton of work to do all this, to set this campaign up, to do it well and try and, Try to do that every week. Good luck on every blog post. You're not going to do that. Right. You need to choose which are the content, which are the articles that are going to be your skyscraper, your pillar content, and what is your strategy for doing all that, and what is your time frame? Because if you want to build, you know, certain number of links, our company, what we do is we, you know, we have a system, a process in place, and so we say for every article we produce, we're going to bring in ten referring domains, and that doesn't seem like a lot. But if you do that month in, month out, it's that trajectory that's going to be really beneficial. So, you know, as to all the extra effort of advertising, getting in front of those influencers, et cetera, it's worth it. 
it makes the the ask a whole lot easier. And sometimes you don't even have to make the ask. We've had that a couple of times where we've pre-advertised to them and they link to it and write an article about it mm-hmm. because they stumbled upon it and no one else has. Um, you know, so sometimes that works in our favor, but um, it's not something, you know, just be realistic. It's not something that you can always do at scale uh, to personalize every email, to target every individual. Um, but there are some tricks around that of where you can do some of it at scale and just, you know, at least you're catching some of them. Yeah. I would say key is mm-hmm. to get them on a mailing list so that those, you know, you can automate those posts when they go out uh, to send out an email with updates on posts. And if you're in a certain niche and you get them on your, your email, um, I mean, that's a huge. Yeah, it totally is. The, 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 interesting part so (laughs) i come from a very twisted mentality of where like yes i want those journalists on my email list and i want them talking about me every time i post something (laughs) so that you know they're you know this is just fantastic stuff but then there's the other side of me who's the seo who's focused on referring domains and who says listen i got that journalist to write about me once i don't need to talk to him again and so he's actually on my blacklist because I'm not going to reach out to him again because that would be a waste of my effort and I need to build a new link from a new site. So it's it's a very interesting dilemma I get into because, hey, this person has been friendly. They're open to our content. They can do it again, but we're not going to reach out to him because – you know, we've already got the credit and it would it, it's not going to be as valuable the second time around. I don't know if you should burn those bridges, though. I mean, you should keep them. It's not <laughs> it's not burning a bridge. Right. We still have it. We're just not spending the effort to be proactive and reaching out right. to them. Right. right. Now, the right, client, right. You know, well, we provide all that to the client. So if they want to do that again in the future, that's fine. But for us, you know, we're we're tasked with charge with creating new referring domains each time. And so it doesn't make sense to reach out to them again. Well, and this is also a case where once you've succeeded in getting a high quality link from a particular writer, journalist, blogger, whatever, um, there, there can be a case made for once the you know, the link building team has succeeded with that, then that contact, we don't want to lose that relationship with them, but they need to be shifted over to say the social media team where they can be nurtured and, and loved on and given some social media juice and, and love and hearts and flowers and all that kind of good stuff back wow. without us, <laughs> without the backlink team having to continue to churn on them they, because they're still valuable. There's still a relationship there, but sometimes that relationship needs to be handed off to a different team at some point. Yeah. Right. And it becomes more of a holistic thing of like, you know, what is the company's PR and the company's marketing efforts doing mm-hmm. to, hey, we got a positive connection here. What are we going to do with it instead of where my team were brought in to build those backlinks? We provide you with all the data when we're done. Here's the context. And, uh, you know, it's up to them to think more holistically and fluidly about it. Yeah, maybe that's a value add that we add on later down the road. But right now we're just having a ton of fun barely keeping up with all the skyscrapers that we're doing. Wow. You have fun building links. <laughs> it, it is crazy. Like we really do. Our staff calls have tons of laughter and, uh, except for like when certain systems are broken and then, you know, they're all pissing and moaning. But, uh, you know, if everything is working the way it should, it's really fun to, be to think of this as a problem and to be a creative problem solver Mm -hmm. of like how do we approach this and um and yeah it definitely comes into making sure you have uh the right people in the right place doing the right thing so some people are strategic thinkers and some people are button pushers Mm -hmm. and you need to make sure they're doing the right role to be able to do that because button pushers are super happy. Hey, I sent out 10,000 emails last week. Sweet. You know, they're happy. And uh, strategic thinkers are like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I have to click this button more than once. So if you have them doing that, you're, you're screwed. And so, you know, as an individual, 
when I started doing Skyscraper myself. You know, I had a team, but we were doing custom work for all of our clients, and I was testing this process out myself. I like to shoot myself because there were so many aspects of it that I could not stand. And then just acknowledging that I have team members who excel at that, who really are great button pushers, and uh, they wanted to take that over. And it's it's been fantastic. So yeah, we actually, we really do enjoy it. It is a fun thing. And I love talking about it, but my team loves doing it. And they're just like, give me more. I yeah. want to, I want to do more. So did, it, when it came to scaling skyscraper, did you have any issues with that? All the time. Um, <laughs> it, there's, you know, th there's a couple of different tools, a couple of different programs out there. And my apologies to Rand and all of the Moz fanatics out there, but I have turned my back on Moz because it just, it didn't have what we need. I mean, in the long and short of it is I'm really disappointed with their database and the quality of what they have. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've had bumps along the way of trying to figure out what is the right mix of tools. Um, we've had bumps where we, you know, you had mentioned earlier not to, not to talk about politics, we actually intertwined religion into one of our skyscrapers. And uh, yeah, that went over like a lead balloon. We, you know, people that agreed with it were like, yeah, that's a great article. I really agree with it. And then when we're like, yeah, can you link to it then? They're like, no, because I don't want to offend my readership. <laughs> oh, come on. You agree with I it totally though. I see that. Yeah. So, you know, it's the same thing. Like, you you joked about it about not being a fan of a certain leader that happens to sit in a certain blank house but that you know that could be really offensive to someone of your listenership and you know i have a personal opinion about that i'm going to try not to share yeah. but you know like we you know for those of us who are in the public we know we have to be careful of that because yeah we have opinions but we're going to piss people off because it's not on topic and, sure. it's, you know, they disagree with us. Right. And I, you know, if you disagree with me, you're wrong. So we'll just get that out in the open, <laughs> like about any topic. Um, I saw a T-shirt the other day. I could agree with you, but then we'd both be wrong. Nice. And I was just like, that's that's my T-shirt. So, um, you know, there's those bumps in scaling have been a couple of different things. One tools. You always have to have the right tools. Uh, you know, you're going to have this um, uncanny area where you're big enough to need a bigger tool, but you're too small to afford it. And so we've bumped into those along the way. Um, we've written our own code that then one of our API providers changed their API and made our code completely pointless. And so wow. it was just like, you know, there's there's quirks as you're going because everybody is growing. Everybody is shifting and scaling. Sure. And so, you know, this is this is not solid ground like PR is like, well, this is the platform you use to reach out and keep, you know, clippings and all that. It's like, yeah, well, things change really rapidly in this industry right now, especially with big data and the venture capital that's being poured into big data yeah. that gives us a lot of options. But it also you know, causes obstacles of now, are we going to go with this vendor or that vendor and how do we switch and what's that going to look like on our code and all this. So yeah, we've, you know, the bigger we get, the more complicated the problems get. Mm -hmm. Um, but the other things, you know, we've ran into bad content, bad targets, um, bad niches that we've, you know, put checks and balances in to now say, okay, if it's anything to do with politics, we don't touch it. If it's anything to do with religion, <laughs> nowhere near it. But now alcohol, I'm all over oh, because yeah. we had, we had a, a whiskey delivery, uh, like box delivery every month you get a new whiskey. And it was like, that was like gangbusters, man. I didn't even <laughs> have to try to get links. It was just, let's write a really fun article and taste test while we're doing it. And suddenly we'll get links. So, mm -hmm. you know, like, it all really depends. But then the other things that we've had issues with are um, bringing on new team members. We've had to really systematize our onboarding and uh, and hiring process. And that's gone well. I'd like to say, you know, we've we've ironed out the kinks there. But going from where it was just me and another guy to now there's 10 of us, um, you know, it's just there's growth 
issues there. And so the, the more you can, uh, you know, look to folks like Buffer and Moz and how they hired and their open hiring policies and processes, mm -hmm. the more we can incorporate that into a small company, um, it definitely helps smooth processes out as well as just being really clear and upfront and doing things that other people don't do. Like for example, one of my pet peeves is I will tell people when they don't make the cut to the next round. Like if they've applied for a job mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's like, okay, we're down to three people and these seven people didn't make the cut. I'm going to tell them. And I just think like that, it, it sets a standard and I've had people reapply for different jobs and get in, you know, the second time into a different position, but it sets the standard that I respect them as an individual. And I just think that if you do things differently than what is normal, but as you know, as a respectful way, sure. you can build a really good company. Um, and the, you know, the longer I'm, I'm doing this, the better I'm at it, at it of having processes in place for hiring and for determining success. Yeah. You have to, you gotta, have and we're trust. actually, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. And now we're actually doing pay by performance. Um, I have not paid by the hour in years and now we're actually switching into pay by performance. Wow. And so it's, it's really kind of fun to say, well, yeah, you have nothing to do with sales, uh, and you have nothing to do with outreach, but, I have these metrics to determine whether or not you're successful at your job. And uh, so if you meet these metrics, then you get paid more. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, our team has a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. But that brings cool. uh, some competitiveness to the uh, office, huh? It does. <laughs> and, you know, the nice part is we're small enough that we're all still friends. Mm -hmm. Um but it does, you know, it is fun to be like, oh, you didn't hit your mark this week, you know, and, and kind of rib each other for it. Um, fortunately, we don't demote or, you know, take yeah. money away. It's more along the lines of, Ramen you know, noodles if you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, honey, I didn't uh, send out 10,000 emails last week, so <laughs> we can't afford to eat this week. Sorry. <laughs> Michelle, you got something you want to add to that? Um, maybe not necessarily add to that, but maybe pivot just a little bit because sure. Paul, you mentioned tools and come on, this audience loves tools. <laughs> so, um, list I'm off maybe gonna... a few of, <laughs> a few of your favorite tools for, for getting the job done when it comes to, to getting these links. Yeah. I, I was just going to lob that out there and see if I was going to get called out on that. But, um, <laughs> you know, by far and away, I love Ahrefs. And I don't know how everybody else pronounces it. It's the weirdest company name. I know where it comes from, but it's not easy to pronounce. <laughs> um, and we, we just love that. Like, bar none, it is the best data. And it's, you know, got Even a over sweet majestic? export function. Oh, yeah. I don't... I've, you know, like a couple of folks on my team really love Majestic and Trustflow and all mm -hmm. this. And I just, and we use it, you know, we, it's in our system, but it's not, it's just not core. We find the database at Ahrefs to be much more um, consistently better, I should say. Hmm. Um, so uh, maybe I'm the only one who does that, but um, yeah, so we're using Majestic, we're using Moz, but we love Ahrefs. Um, Another tool that probably doesn't get mentioned often enough is Zapier. And I know it's like, well, what? That has nothing to do with SEO. What is this all about? <laughs> but when you're doing anything at scale, uh, Zapier handles so much things. Yeah, APIs and really, everything. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, we have weekly status reports. We have link notification, link uh, of acquisition notifications. So anything, any action that we take, our clients get a notification or, you know, graphs get updated or whatever. And so it's just because we haven't grown big enough and because things move too fast, we haven't built our own custom dashboard and, you know, system 
Um, but we're able to cobble it all together with Zapier because I can tie in with Ahrefs. I can tie in with Facebook, you know these yeah. other tools and with Google Sheets. Oh well, yeah, and um, Facebook leads with Zapier is so fantastic. But <laughs> yeah, is. you can just tie all this in. Um, before Zapier had Facebook leads, Facebook leads was a pain, but now it's just a breeze. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, but yeah, so that's the second tool, uh, and then our third tool. What really makes the magic happen is Pitchbox, and so I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this. Yeah. Um, it is by far and away the biggest and best tool I've found that does this. And um, they're just super fantastic. For those of you who don't know, uh, you can use Pitchbox to do your prospecting, essentially. You can also, if they just integrated with Ahrefs, so now I can drop a link into, um, into Pitchbox and they will use my Ahrefs account and get all of the backlinks, all the domains that are, all the referring domains that are pointing to that, and they will get all the contact information for those domains. So it like wow. totally took out six steps of our process. And I went from, I was consulting with two of my uh, staff members and we were trying to develop a better process. I had a developer who, you know, we were going to code up the script and then the next day Pitchbox goes, Hey, Beth, guess what? We got Ahrefs integration. And it was just like everything <laughs> smoothed out. So that was just last week. I mean, it's soup. Like I was saying, things are shifting and moving yeah. at a quick pace. And so now I go to Pitchbox, I say, Hey, here's my target article URL, drop it in. And it pulls the hundred or thousand referring domains and all of their contact information puts it all in as if it were a CRM. And now I can go through and personalize my emails to each one of those. That's huge. Um, and then, you know, it sends it through your actual email service provider. So in our case, we're using Google apps and, um, you know, so that gets through all of the can spam issues and all of the, you know, whatnot. It's just, we're sending it at scale but we're sending to an individual person. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like you're sending a newsletter. So yeah, Pitchbox makes the world go round in our world. Um, we've tried a couple of competitors and uh, just nothing is as solid as Pitchbox, but we do keep our eye on the market because there, you know, there's, the, there are other people coming up, other um Ninja Outreach is the one that I keep referring to because I know that they're developing fast. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just not right yet. So um, if you're listening, Ninja Outreach, feel free to you know reinstate my free account and I will tell you what you're doing wrong. Um, but the <laughs> you know there's there's a lot of room for growth. I'm actually working with Pitchbox's uh, leadership as well because we're we've really pushed their system pretty hard and um, not like their system fails. It's just we're a large user of it in a, in a unique way because not many other people are scaling Skyscraper. Right. Awesome, man. So, Paul, for just thirty nine ninety five, Paul will – no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Contact I will him. let you download a free version of this podcast episode for $40. Yeah. No. Uh, the – you know, yeah. no, I, yeah. I included a link to that, to the skyscraper article in Twitter. So, and I'll actually share it out to the other platforms as well. So you guys can read up on it. You know, a backlink from your website would be really helpful too, you know, since we're doing this, but <laughs> uh, since we're talking about <laughs> domains, <laughs> um, the, you know, we have two tiers and, and one is the basic scale at $600 per article. And we, we look at it at this way. You know, I've described all the work. There's, there's no like secret sauce here. It's just doing it at scale. And, um, and so for that 600, you get a really incredible article and you get 10 referring domains. And that's our guarantee that no matter how long it takes, we have one article. Remember that religion one? Yeah, it's going on six months now and we still haven't even hit 10 domains. But we guarantee that we will acquire 10 referring domains for it. Um, because of the variable of the users, uh, you know, the, the audience that we're reaching out to, we can't tell you how fast it's gonna happen, but um, yeah, typically it's somewhere between the, uh, 
the median is two months. So we'll just put that that way, that most every article is taken care of, has their 10 referring domains within eight weeks um, of publishing. So, um, but yeah, then, you know, for those of you listening, like, okay, how do you break out that 600? Because on my side, I know what it all calculates and all that because I run the business. But for you, where's the value in that $600? It's, it's a really a lot of money to spend for just a regular blog post. You know, if you're spending more than $250 for a blog post, I'd like to have you hire me because I can do really great for that. Um, but if you're, you know, spending $600 for a blog post, then you're missing out on a huge opportunity. But if you look at it the other way around and say, well, I'm getting 10 guaranteed referring domains. So that's $60 a link. That's not that bad of a deal. The going rate that I've been aware of, and I don't know if you guys want to correct me on this, but for those shady, you know, purchasers of links, we're looking at $120 per year of a link on the Jeez. open market. And so for us to be able to generate links at $60, oh, and by the way, then your content's free um, at $60 and they're not time limited. You know, obviously we're not in control of any of these. It's not like a PBN where we control it. It's, you know, if that user decides to revamp their website and take that article down or take that link down, sorry, I can't guarantee how long that link's going to be there. Um, that's why we talk about the tra trajectory thing, because if you're building links, it doesn't matter how many of those, well, it does, but it doesn't, <laughs> it's not as painful when you lose links. Uh, due to site reorganizations or whatever. So, um, yeah, so that's, you know, there's two ways to look at it. One, it's a really expensive piece of content that has great outreach built in. Or two, it's free content with $60 a referring domain, which is really fantastic. We also have a higher tier where we actually do more of the advertising and the social media and linking out to influencers or reaching out to influencers. Um, and that, takes longer, has less of a guarantee of success. Um, you're yeah. still going to get guarantee of 10 referring domains, but there's a lot more variables at play there. But it is the same content. It's just, you know, three times as much effort on the link building, the yeah. outreach set. Paul, I'm sorry, but we are out of time, man. Commercials <sighs> are only 30 seconds. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, uh, well, thank you for having me, though. Yeah, I, no, love I appreciate it. If, if people want to reach you, Paul, where can they reach you on Twitter? On Twitter, it's Namtrock. It's my last name spelled backwards, so N A M T R O K. Okay, and your website? Again? It's Connects Digital Marketing, C O N N E X Digital Marketing dot com, and obviously my email is Paul at Connects Digital Marketing dot com. Awesome. We'll give you a link too. Don't worry about it. <laughs> awesome. Sweet. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate appreciate you. Yeah, I can't talk still. Appreciate you being <laughs> on the show. Uh, I want to thank everybody for their support and Michelle especially for co-hosting. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Did anything you want to add before we sign off here? Um, nothing other than you want to tell them what's going to happen next week. Yeah. Next week. I was getting to that. <laughs> Our interview is with <laughs> Misha Fisher Krishner. I probably t of Zendesk. I uh, probably totally messed that up and I apologize, Misha. Um, but uh, next week, and uh, tune in every Tuesday, 3.30 to 4.30. We're going to be talking about SEO and the AI ADA funnel. Not sure what that is, but, <laughs> and customer service. Do you have any insight into the ADA funnel? Michelle, hello? I don't know. Okay. This is right. this a new topic for me. I'll be excited to hear, hear what she has to say. All right. Yeah, me too. All right, guys. Thank you so much for your support. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Search Talk Live is sponsored by the Robert Palmer family of companies. Find the true value of your home when you log on. HomeValue.com If you have questions for Search Talk Live or you're interested in being a guest or a sponsor of the show, email Robert at SearchTalkLive.com. That's SearchTalkLive.com.